Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, I know it's a pretty late session. I thought you were going to be out, out when the sun is already out. So <laughs> thank you very much for coming to our session at the end of the day. Uh, we're going to talk about data caching strategies for LLM training and, and serving uh, with Alexio. My name is Jasmine. I run the open source community, open source, um, the uh, DevRel team at our company. Uh, and I'm a partner, uh, Lou. She's one of our machine learning engineer, and she's also our open source um, project uh, member, community member. Uh, for those of you, I'm going to explain a little bit about Alexio since not all of you know about us. Uh, so we are a open source product that is started at UC Berkeley's AMP Lab back in 2014. Um, and then it's about seven, eight years now. Um, you know, right now we have about 13 actually, it says 1,200. So uh, 1,300 contributors uh, that in our community and are still growing that number. Uh, more than 11,000 right now on our Slack community. So if you're interested, uh, we also have the Slack uh, link there. Uh, we're recognized as one of the 10 most critical Java-based open source project. It was written back then, so it's still Java-based uh, by Google and OpenSSF. Um, and then uh, we're also named one of the more uh, most valuable repositories on GitHub. Um, so if you're interested, check out our community Slack. I'm usually on there. Uh, we recently also won uh, one of the first uh, IEEE Open Software Service Award um, just of earlier this year. Um, so that's how they open source. So what do we do? Uh, basically, I've laid out a structure there. So this is what we used to do in the past when there was the hybrid cloud <laughs> and the multi-cloud era. So on the bottom you see is basically all the storage so that you can, you know, where you can get your data. Uh, S3, um, Azure, Hadoop, um, Unio, um, all of those. And on top you see all of the compute engines. So Alexio kind of sits between the storage and the compute. Uh, so we basically build a virtual distributed system uh, that is a layer uh, that help to virtualize across all of the data sources um, to serve data to the applications regardless of where your data source is, regardless of their storage. So that solution is applicable across the environment, whether it's in cloud or on-prem, bare metal, uh, or containerized. Um, we do, like I said, we started as open source project. We are, uh, however, a for profit company. Uh, so the company has both the open source team and then a closed enterprise team. Uh, we do offer two type of product uh, regardless. So for example, Uber and Meta, they are using uh, our open source uh, software. Um, they use Alexa Local Cache to help them to improve their performance. Um, if you are interested, you can check out the Raptor X, um, you know, article from the Presto team in uh, Facebook back then, right now on the Meta team. And Uber also recently released two engineer blogs on how how they use Alexio Local Cache to help them uh, to build their AI uh, data platform. Um, so those are the sort of the companies that we serve um, as Alexio. Um, those includes both uh, the open source uh, uh, users and then the enterprise customers. So we do have some differentiations uh, between the open source one and then the enterprise one. For the area enterprise customers, they get different features and support. That's another team that deal with that. All right, so what do we, we know? We're now moving to the AI era. You might be wondering, so what do we do now with Alexio? We used to serve in the sort of hybrid cloud era. Now, in the era, AI era, um, we see a lot of training from the large volume data to uh, learn from the data set. So that's where we come to space. Because at the end of the day, um, <laughs> so uh, we're back to, um, uh, so um, data management is under spotlight as company seeks to uh, out competitors. So, Oh, it's the next page, okay. So in the new AI era, the training large uh, language models requires the data readiness to have vast amount of data, and then the whole storage and processing and projection uh, can be costly. Now what do we do here? What does that mean by data readiness? Um, so that it requires high scalability and a high availability and high performance. And those happen to be the things that we can do. So Alexio, at the end of the day, the technology that we build is a large distributed caching. Um, so the data cache, in this case, it can help to boost performance and then to help with save your cost and to prevent network congestion, fetch data once from remote data storage to repeated uh, data accesses and to offload under storage by bursted highly um, concurrent AI workloads and put challenges on under storages. So that's where we come to help. Um, that's today's agenda. Um, I'm going to introduce my partner, Lou, and she's been working, one of our machine learning engineers, working on the LRM uh, caching strategy. Okay, thank you, Jasmine. Um, 
Today, I will have like uh, three main agenda. The first one is what's our catching strategy based on different traffic patterns that we collected from our uh, users, their actual like production data set and their traffic patterns, and how based on how we based on those traffic patterns to come to get the strategies catching strategy to mess out the performance. And the other side, we also have the LN catching strategies that we collected from the production workloads. And not only will we share, I want to share our, our experience with you folks, we also want to have some discussion about some future direction that uh, we can integrate into the AI machine learning, the full life cycle. So the first one is the traffic pattern and the catching strategies from AI machine learning. So we know that catching plays a crucial role in the accelerator for AI computation, but as we work with different users, they have really different traffic patterns and leading to different performance-oriented catch strategies and recommendations. So the first one is what's the data access pattern for our production workloads. So we figure out that there are two, uh, mainly two scenarios. First scenario is that the data is stored in some large structure files, for example, the arrow files. In this case, uh, we found that there's much more precision and random risk than sequential risk. For example, you may want to read some columns of the whole file, or you may want to assess some blocks. And we found that the block access is almost evenly distributed, and each read is quite small. It can be four kilobytes read in arrow. And we know that for small position random reads, even our like, local disk doesn't perform that well. And on the other side, we also found another pattern that the data is stored in many small semi-structured or unstructured files, which is pretty common in computer vision training. The file number can be pretty big, like larger than 10 billion files. And the file access is almost, uh, almost evenly distributed. For example, maybe each training, job, uh, each training client, they want to read a batch of files. And then based on the traffic pattern that we just talked about, what's the uh, strategy that we recommend? First, we target performance. So for performance side, it's quite similar to what we did in our computers. Like in our computer, like science, they have L1, L2 catch to boost the performance. And similarly, in training part, it also used the hierarchical catching. Like first, we utilize the system file buffer catch which is leveraged memory that, and then can provide the training files, the training data at the highest, best performance. But we know that like, memory is limited resources, especially in the training. I heard that many people say that like, they only have like, a really limited CPU memory, and that's become their bottleneck. And so on, on the other hand, many of our uh, users, they actually have local MVNE. So, by utilizing the local disk page cache, like we, we, can, um, we can put the pages, like uh, one megabyte pages, into the local disk to boost the performance. And on the other hand, if local disk is still not enough, a remote cache, a separate cache cluster that closer to chain name can help us to provide data much faster than remote storage, but still like, have a much bigger capacity. So uh, another uh, recommendation is about how we optimize the position and render read. So uh, one suggestion we give to our user is that we preload the data. So instead of loading only part of the data, you can preload and then to catch the whole file. And another suggestion is that uh, not just, uh, so for example, we want to read 100 kilobytes of data from offset one megabytes. And instead of only reading 100 kilobytes, we can read data in chunk, for example, one megabyte. So it helps that if the user, the client, they continually want to sequential read the file. It lowers the request rate from like 10 times to only one times if they want the fo like, following data set. However, if the user, they only want that 100 kilobyte, and then they jump to two megabyte and read the following 100 kilobyte, then in this case, we actually have a 10 times reamplification. So it kind of a trade-off between whether we want to reduce the request number or we, uh, we care more about the reapplication issue. So that's why uh, usually 
when we work with our users, we want to know what's their actual traffic pattern so that to see what's the better catching strategy and risk strategies. And on the other hand, because of a different assess pattern, so our users may not know in the beginning that what's our, what's the capacity they want for their catching. So the scalability and elasticity um, for the catching, the catch capacity is important, that they can add more catch or remove catch when they need it. And uh, so also there's another pattern other than the data assess pattern. It's about like in recent five years, we see the growing demand for the cloud strategy. And many of the users, they move machine learning infrastructure from on-prem cluster to cloud cluster, or the hybrid or multi-cloud environment to serve their machine learning infrastructure. So here we present a general idea of a hybrid or multi-cloud machine learning infrastructure. So uh, on the right side is the offline, uh, offline training platform. And on the right side, uh, maybe like right, your, your right side, like here. So it's the online serving cluster. And in the middle is the storage system. So in the first step, uh, we, on, the, uh, on the training platform, so there is a unified caching layer which is responsible for fetching data from the cloud storage and to serving the data to the training cluster. And on the online like serving uh, cluster, so after the training down, the model will be written back to the storage. And on the online serving cluster, there is also a caching layer to help fetch the model and quickly deploy the model to all the serving nodes. And based on this new hybrid cloud pattern, so what kind of suggestion would we want to give for this scenario? So the first one is because it's hybrid and multi-cloud environment, we want to be cloud friendly. We want to be able to switch different like training platform and also switch different storage system. And we also want a configurable cache admission and evasion policy that we can get the data when we want and then evict it if we don't need it anymore. And on the other side, a training uh, job, it can take like weeks to do. So any single point of failure in the data uh, providing will cause the, the, basically the training job to fail. So any hatching strategy need to be able to fall back to the under storage. This means that if some of the catch is not available or the whole catch is offline, we are still able to provide the data from the under storage to the users. And for the cost perspective, like uh, for um, so many of the users, they actually complain about the storage cost. So one part is that many storage like S3 today, they are basically charge you based on the API cost. So, and also the data transfer cost, basically how much data your job actually read the data from the cloud storage. And for training job, we may need the same data set again and again. So if we, every time we need to go to storage to fetch the data, so it will be a high cost for both the API call and also the data transfer. And here is a general idea of how we can integrate cache with AI training platform. So we have an AI uh, training node which running some training jobs. And we have a cache client that is deployed in the training node. And in the middle, we have a remote cache cluster which have multiple cache workers to serve the cache. So the training node may want to read a specific data set. It will talk to the local cache client. If it has local cache, then it will directly return the local cache. And if there is no local cache, it will talk to the remote cache worker node to get the data that they want. If the worker node has the data, that's great, it returns the data. If the data worker node does not have data, it will talk to the under storage to get the data. That's a general idea of how the cache can be integrated with AI training. And we also have some evaluation results based on the pattern that we just discussed. Remember the pattern that we discussed previously about the data access pattern? Like the first one is the, some large structure files. And for this case, uh, we actually get some production machine learning data set from our users, and also we replay their traffic pattern on different risk strategies to see which one actually gives them better performance. 
So in this case, we evaluate two read strategy, the position read and sequential uh, streaming read. And in this case, we see that the blue one is the position read latency, and the red one is the streaming read latency. And in this case, the streaming read latency is much higher than the position read latency. That's why like, uh, probably by like position read outperforms streaming read when reading large machine learning data sets. And on the other hand, we also evaluate the small unstructured files. We also collected the production data set from our users. The original data set is pretty large, and we're sampling like 10,000 files from the data set. And also we replay the traffic pattern. So, the, so here we see a pretty different patterns. Still the blue one is the position read latency, and the red one is the streaming read latency. And in this case, the streaming read latency is actually slightly better than the position read latency. So basically, like streaming read outperforms position read when reading small uh, unstructured files. So previously, we talked about the catching strategy actually based on different like traffic pattern and how catch can be used in AI training. And now we want to talk about the actual catching strategy that we collected from the different users like Microsoft, Shopee, and Zhihu. So in the first case, like what's their challenge that they face in their large language model pipeline? So this structure basically capture like many of our users, they have actually different clouds. They have their training clouds, they have their offline cloud, like their on-prem cloud, and also they have their online cloud for serving. And so these clouds, they may be far away from each other, and they have different storage systems. Some are in the object storage, some are still using like traditional HDFS. And so for the training clouds, so they want to do the model training with training data in the object storage. And in this case, they first directly get the data from object storage. And in this, so what the problem that they face is that they found that the model training, the GPU utilization rate is lower than expected. And they also have the on offline cloud, which they still using the spark machine learning to, to do the training on HDF data set. And in this case, they found that their HDFS is pretty overloaded. So Basically, like chaining, we usually get the data like in dozens of QPS, and this will have a really huge pressure on the persistent storage, which are not target for all the really as for the burst like chaining workloads. So in this case, their storage like cluster maybe like uh, in basically like when you have some right job that want to write to HDFS, it may be blocked by the read request or may, maybe have a really high latency. And also, on the other hand, for the online cloud, which we do the model serving, the, after the data is chained from the model chaining clusters, and the model is written back to your persistent storage, and the model needs to be as quick as possible deployed to the model serving platform. And the, the time is really important in this space. But consider that like, deploy the same model to like, a large amount of nodes, you need to read the model from the storage to every node, and this is e really easy to have a network congestion issue. And the strategy to have a distributed caching is that we basically add the uh, caching layer between the training, the model serving, and your storage system. So the training data can fetch once from the under storage and provide to model training again and again. For example, your, your training may have like a large amount of app parts, like a large amount of iterations on the data set. Then you load once from the object storage or HDFS, and you cache it in the caching layer closer to your training cluster. And then you provide those data from the caching layer to the training cluster to offload the storage and reduce the API cost. And on the other hand, it also like, improved the model serving model deployment phase by having Elasio to load the data from the storage system, have Mopoly replica in the caching layer, and then quickly deploy the model to the serving cluster. So basically, having a distributed caching, it can have a high performance metadata and data cache access with caching, and you reduce pressure on the persistent storage and network. And also, like, um, 
uh, the caching solution need to have industry standard access interface, like the POSIS API to turn the caching into a local folder format, and S3 API to assess the data storage just like assess S3 data set, HDFS API to assess the caching just like assess HDFS. So the, uh, the applications can assess data transparently without the need to modify the codes. So that's an evaluation that we do, like compared to training directly from storage, which have a really long time in the data loading. Like data loading here takes out 82% of the time duration, and the GPU utilization rate is only less than 20%. And while having a caching layer, the data loading rate is much more, is, is largely reduced, which directly results in a higher GPU utilization rate. And this one is like we collected from one of the users. Like they basically is the latency that how long it takes to deploy the model. And um, on the left side is the chart, is the, the, the number, the latency that they deploy the model without having a caching solution when they directly fetch the data from their store, uh, fetch the model from the storage. And in this case, it normally takes like 15 minutes to deploy model. And the middle part is that when they start onboarding uh, the caching layer and the, the time you can see the model deployment is reduced from uh, 15 minutes to around three minutes. And after some performance improvement that we do based on their traffic pattern and the need for their model deployment, the time is reduced to maybe like less than one minute. Basically, like in our shared block with NVIDIA, the benefits of from GPU acceleration are limited if data access dominate the execution time. Okay, so we also want to share with you guys some of our future direction, like the future items that we want to do. So this is a general idea of our future direction. Uh, like we say, we already talked about uh, how data cache can play a, let's say how, to, how a data cache can play in the full AI machine learning life cycle. We have discussed some of the data access pattern and how to integrate cache with AI training and serving. But maybe we can go even further. We can integrate a unified data caching layer with different components in the machine learning life cycle. The components can be data processing, feature engineering, model training, and model inference. So the caching layer can help fetch the data from under storage and give the raw data to data preprocessing. And the processed data can be written back to the caching layer. And the caching layer can synchronize the data with the storage that you want to like, sync with, persist the data to. And on the other hand, the processed data can be given to the feature engineering uh, engine so that the features can be also written back to the unified layer. And similarly, for the model training, it can load the data and feature from the caching layer and write back the model. And for model inference, it can read the model and write back some of the carry result for future catching. So thank you for your atten attention and joining us today to learn about what's the actual catching strategy for AI machine learning. And if you have any further questions or would like to learn more about Alasio, please visit our us website or join our Slack channel. We'll be happy to answer any question that you have and provide more information on how Alasio can actually help you with your AI machine learning workloads. So does anyone have any questions? Oh, thank you. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. So compared to, uh, to other caching systems, what's the uh, benefit uh, Alusia provide? For example, like uh, Radius? Right, pretty popular open source. So can you actually share some light with us? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, as many users, when they first onboarding, they will throw Redis as a memory, in memory caching. But Redis have a limitation like being in memory caching. So for Alasio, actually our main target scenario is memory plus disk and mainly the local NVIDIA. Because nowadays, the local MVIE actually can have much bigger capacity, and the performance are still good. Any other question? OK. 
That's it. Thank you. It looks like the last session in the conference. I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks.